Thank you so far for the joining on this very program on the Oweleke TV, the Jibrin Angle of it. Thank you, O God, for how you have helped us this far. Today is Thank once you. again another opportunity, Lord, to bring about some issues, you know, um, uh, corrective, you know, measures in the body of Christ. Yes, I pray, O oh God, that you will lead us by your spirit. Yes, to our listeners out there, may the Lord grant you all a listening ear and understanding spirit. I will pray, O oh God, that we will add, you know, blessing to our hearers and not bring more confusion. Because the Spirit of God is what we are yielded to. Take all the glory. In amen. Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I welcome you viewers all over the world to um, Oweleke TV. And this is the Jibreel angle of it and uh, the gospel segment of it. We'll be dealing with three issues. The first one is, should believers be involved in active politics? <clears throat> now, this is my position. Um, and this is where I stand. Um, yes, believers should be involved in active politics. Um, uh, but to a large extent, to a measure, Men of God that have a covenant of call, that are at the leadership position, spiritually, are not supposed to be in active politics. They are not supposed to be in active politics. Permit me, I will call names. Number one, a man that God has given the mandate to raise a flock. Chris Okoti, via into it, and that God called him. I mean, to me, I saw that as a joking issue. Pastor Tunde Bakari did the same thing. Apostle Humphrey Urumaka did the same thing. These people were given a mandate by God to occupy a spiritual office. But they left it by means of distraction, which I don't know what kind of distraction, you know, maybe to bring about, you know, um, uh, righteousness, to bring about, you know, um, uh, stability, to bring about order in the system. No, that was completely wrong from my own understanding. Why do I say that, yes, believers can be involved in active politics? Number one, the scripture speaking in Proverbs 29 and verse 2, it says, when the righteous rule it, when the righteous rule it, the people rejoice. But when the wicked are in authority, it brings about a burden upon the people. The Bible for that speaking in the epistle, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, I read verse 1, verse 2, and verse 3. He said, I exhort you, therefore, that first of all, supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving thanks be made for all men. Verse 2 says, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all goodness and honesty. And verse 3 says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Now look at this. If God does not want us to be active in the you know, affairs of our nation, our region, our our, you know, um, uh, local government, God will not, because the unrighteous will never bring about anything that will please God. The unrighteous will never bring about anything that will bring peace and harmony. And uh, so God will not say to us that we should be praying as much as yes, we pray for all men, but, you know, very critical, our prayer should be more to those 
that are of heavenly mind that are in politics. Now, why do I say that um, uh, men with covenant call should not be involved? You know, if they are involved, number one, it is completely biased. Members of the church will want to stand despite the fact that that might not be their political affiliation. But because Baba G.O., my daddy in the Lord, has identified or is vying for a particular position, everybody will go that very way. And so, men of God that are called, given leadership position in the spiritual circle, could have a, a political party that they have the affiliation to. But it is very wrong for them to come to the pulpit and begin to tell the pulpit that this is, you know, um, the political party that they should fire for, or this political party is should fire for. Why? Because in the congregation, everybody should have a choice. Nobody should be cajoled. Nobody should be forced to go a particular way. And so, um, uh, by this, I want us to know that it takes the righteous to go into the influence of, you know, um, uh, politics to be able to bring about changes. Now we have good example. Joseph had a political, the position Joseph had in Egypt was purely a political, you know, position. Daniel ruled in four dispensation under four kings. You understand? And he was very strategic and he was very critical. You know, in the days of Jairus, in the days of Nebuchadnezzar and the rest of them. Even Nehemiah. Nehemiah was strategically positioned in the polity of the day. And as a result of that, he was able to get a mandate to go and rebuild the house or the broken walls of Jerusalem. And so my point is this. Believers can get themselves involved in politics, but men that are called into spiritual leadership should never mingle themselves into, you know, political arena. God bless you, sir. Amen. Thank you very much, man of God. Um, based on number <clears> one, <throat> uh, your comments, um, yeah. your admonition and your exhortation, um, you've just um, you've just answered the number two question. On our That's team. right. So That's we'll right. just move to the third position. After number three, okay. I'll be able, I think uh, I'll be, I think um, that is where I can I, I contribute the little that I, I okay the little that I have in mind. Um, okay. Number three. So now you you basically said there is nothing wrong in believers generally, in general That's terms. Right. To be uh, to join politics as is and uh, as well as um vie for elective elective positions so okay. Um, okay now what do you think of since you support that what is the positive angle what does first what does even though we are we what our topic says it focuses on the spiritual angle but what is yeah. what is the positive angle to a believer joining politics or vying for elective position or occupying an elective position. What is a positive angle to that? Uh, before we go into the spiritual benefit, well, I want to see, I want to talk, I want, want to talk about the positive, the uh, uh, physical positivity to that. Okay. Um, um, for a believer that is going into politics, Sir, I want you to understand that politics is of this world and it is ruled and governed by the system of this world. Jesus Christ speaking, he said the laws of this life, of this world, they lord it upon their subjects. That is the politics of this world. They lord it 
upon their subjects. So, uh, before any believer there for, you know, go into politics, that believer must be trained to build his capacity in order to enter the system of the world. I don't know. Please, just permit me to flow the way I'm flowing. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, sir. Please go ahead. I might be touching. I might be touching the negative aspect as well as a you know positive aspect. No, go ahead, of sir. This is our question. Yes. Now, um, you know, if the believer he is born again, washed and sanctified by the blood of Jesus, he has a conscience to serve the people by the reason of the grace of God upon his or her life. And so she, he or she goes there with good intention. But you see, if that very believer does not grow to have the capacity to absorb the system that is in the world, the believer can become corrupted can go in there and become corrupted. And so, if the believer goes with understanding that politics is not spiritual system, I can, in quote, it is a spiritual system in the negative. If he goes to that very system, with that very capacity, with understanding, with training, and has been schooled, that believer will make a positive change. In the case of Nehemiah, there were men in the system that fought Nehemiah because he wanted to do the right thing. Sambalat was there. Tobiah was there. They fought him. Even in the days of Daniel, there were people who went to report to the king. Why? Because Daniel, by reason of his connection to heaven, he did not disregard that connection. Because to him, that connection was the very thing that gave him the strength to be able to make an impact that enabled him to reign in four dispensation, in four you know, regime of, you know, Babylonian government. And so if you go there and you are very sound spiritually, you will make a positive impact. You will bring changes. You will make positive impact. You will bring changes. If you go there and you stand, that will not back you. Because heaven is, and as a result of that, it will bring happiness to the people. It will bring peace to the people. But unfortunately, if you go there and you are not strong, Bajamila, or what do you call him? He was a Christian. But what has happened to him today? The chief of staff to the present yeah. president. Yeah, I know. He has become a he has become a Muslim. He was a Christian. Oh, but yeah, I, mean, well, I, I know he's a Muslim. Was he a Christian? He was a Christian. Please try and make your research. He was a Christian. So you can say the negative influence when you are weak and you go for elective position, active elective position. In the first place, it means that those guys. We're not even Christians. They're just looking for something. You know, I, myself and my host were just talking about that issue and everything. There was one young man that used to be the your deputy governor in Akwaibom State here that was very close to my wife when they were in revival assembly of Apostle Ansel and Madubuko. Today, he's nowhere to be found. He has dropped the Christian faith. He has lost it all. You understand? Because one thing you know, the moment you are coming into, I don't know the politics in America or elsewhere, but in Africa, you understand, it's a strong cause. It's a strong cause. So you just don't stand up and go, if not, they will win you over to your side, to their side. 
So you have to be very, very strong in your conviction. Your convictions will be strong enough to drive you. If not, you will, um, you will, you will just miss it and uh, join them and join them in the occultism. Because I consider it a complete occultism. What they are doing is just occultism, you know. So um, uh, that is just it. That is All right. it. Thank you so much, man of God. Um, you have said a lot, and um, we thank you for the message uh, from God. Um, now, I think I differ with you. Um, okay. I, I differ. I differ from your own opinion. Um, the truth is, um, yes, Nehemiah was technically into politics, but at the same time, um, the politics is not the politics of today. Um, okay. And that it was basically under royalty. The monarchical, monarchical uh, system of governance. Uh, okay. so that kind of system, you don't have um, much kind of, you just have one one straight opposition. And that one straight opposition is just a king. Um, either opposition, either proponent or opponent, a sort of, of in, when it comes to faith. The moment you have, you find favor with the king as a, as a child of God, as a believer, you will be very, you you will be you will be very susceptible to influencing the king into um, the right judgment, just like what Nathan uh, Nathan did in the life of uh, the role he played in the life of David um, as a prophet. A sort of um, though they, these are two different roles. Um, so the thing is, um, Nehemiah, yes. He was next, he was very close to the king, um, and he was uh, someone who's who uh, who was uh, in the in the good books of the king, and so the king favored him in several aspects, which includes the building of the, the allowing him to go back home, um, to um, go back home to rebuild the temple where he faced so much opposition. The temple has nothing to do with politics. It has it had nothing to do with the with the rulership or leadership or whatever. So it's uh, the temple has to do with uh, the kingdom of God. It has to do with the church. It has to do with spiritual things. So these are two different things. The opposition he faced were not actually our uh, leadership opposition. They, so it was just about um, the devil, the light and the darkness between the light. It was a fight between the light and the darkness. Now back to the issue. They are the reason why I um, my opinion differs from yours um, is that the Bible says, "Give to Caesar what is Caesar's," and um, that is just it. Um, this do give to I in my word. I said I say give to the spirit what is the spirit, and give to the world what is the world. Um, the same Bible says we should flee temptation. Um, so you first of all ask yourself, all the believers, you just listed one or two of them, all the believers, the one including some of them I know that went into politics, um, contested elections, won elections, even as governors. Um, right now, even current president, governor of uh, Benue State, I think is I don't think, I think a reverend father, but I know he's a minister of God, uh, sort of. So all of them, which one has actually come out with he, his head up high? No one. All of them, they went in as known as known to, to the public as real believers. Um, some people who knew them before, before they became, they assumed that leadership. They, be, they knew them as someone, as, as people of righteousness. But after they left, what happened? What became of the system? What record? What, 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 what can we say of their antecedents as, 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 um, as a leader then? A sort of, no one, all of them failed. All of them, including Osimba Joe, who was a, a very senior pastor um, with Redeemed Christian Church of God. A sort of everybody knew what happened during his uh, vice presidential uh, vice presidency. 
Um, so the thing is, the truth is, now I've, I'm always, I'm a believer of, let's go in the way of the Bible. And I'm a believer of not just let's go in the way of the Bible, let's go in the era of grace. After our Lord Jesus Christ came up, um, came, did all he did, and uh, died for us, and uh, rose again, um, descended into heaven, and promised to come back. Now, the truth is, politics to a believer, in my own judgment, is a distraction, a total distraction. The Bible says flee temptation. You have just noted it. Look, it is what is as it is obtained in Nigeria. So it is everywhere. The way what you do when you see power, you call it cult. It is it is the same thing. The same, the same thing applies all over the world. Leadership, when it comes to leadership, power, power comes with a whole lot of force. Power comes with a whole lot of force, force huge force, heavy force. And forces, not just force, force as the devil per se, the devil is what I control all. That is the main force. But we have other forces, demonic forces that are involved, spiritual forces, dark forces that are involved in leadership. And let me tell you one thing. And because God um, handed, actually allowed the devil to rule the world. In fact, the real leadership of the earth is in the devil's hand. God did not take it back from him. God allowed him to do that, God giving that permission to do that. So as far as I'm concerned, the world and the leadership of the world is in the devil's hand. And that is why you see elections. Sometimes we ask God, why did you allow this person to win this election? Why did you allow that person to succeed or to get to that power? Or That's because God does not intervene in leadership. Most Some of this leadership, even though the Bible says he's the one who gives power, who takes, who gives power, or whatever, and who installs kings and pulls down kings or whatever. But technically, there are times, there are most times that God does not even intervene, allow the devil to install his stooges, a sort of, and that is why, that is what, I, when, that is when we arrive at bad leadership, um, bad governance, a sort of, because um, God decided to permit the devil to just um, go on, 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 on leadership spree, because he gave him the permission to do that, a, a sort of. So the, my point is this. Um, in the in the in the era of grace, in the New Testament era, honestly, in the Old Testament, okay, when you talk about the Old Testament, remember in the Old Testament what we were playing then, what was what what played, um, what what played on in the Old Testament was all religion. It was not there was no spirituality, at all, so everything was just religion, religion and. Um, do this and you shall be this. Do that or you shall not be this. It was just religion, obedience. Total, you were obedience. Obedience was demanded from God that you have to do this or you face this punishment. It was practically religion. It didn't. There was no issue. There were areas where grace were was was where grace was manifested in the lives of people. <laughs> However, in the worship, in the way of worship, in the way of worship of God, it was religion um it was all religious ostensations um that was practiced a sort of so um grace didn't play that much role in the life of believers spirituality didn't play that much it was all about, it was all about physical physical outward outward practices um physical practices um that is just material practices a sort of so sim uh, things that um uh, things that um, were symbolic at that, at, the, at that point, um, so that is just that is just it. But as against the the era of grace, the era of grace is about spiritual spirituality. Everything is spirit. Everything. Um, the Bible says, "He who worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth." And that is just it. It wasn't so in the Old Testament, and that is why if you must worship God in spirit and in truth, you you should not you should not mingle. You should not mingle, you should not associate yourself with the world. Associate yourself with the world means that you cannot be equally yoked with them. Don't do things in common with them. Don't participate in what they do. All you do is, okay, um, you pray for them and when it comes to leadership. Pray on the pray on the sideline to pray and ask God to install the right people. 
to use to speak to people to guide the leaders on the, on the right decisions. So, and that is that is just it. The truth is, because I have not, I am yet to really, really find, come in contact or come uh, um, in, in notice or um, get the information of, of find come to, uh, come through uh, an information that that says that. This, this man, man was, went in. This, this man was a and believer. Did the writing. Yes, this man was a believer, and, and he went and into out, politics. And if did and the came out and came out as a believer, as a believer, I am still. I'm yet to find that out. I am still because I. I, I have met. Yes, I have met. You have met. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Now, now my point is this. We'll come back to yes. what met. We will come back to okay. that. Now, my point is this. I remember when Jesus was um, was in the earth, uh, on the earth rather, um, the life he lived, and when he left, the life of the apostles lived, um, Jesus had nothing to do with earthly leadership. The apostles and disciples, they had nothing to do with earthly leadership. From, Genesis, from the Matthew to Revelation, there is no area where we talked about where there's no record of any believer any believer not just the disciple um not just not just the disciples but any believer um joining even though politics there was even better than what we have today it was monarch monarch monarchical uh, leadership then which was even easier no one joined no believer joined rather we had people you working remember. under the king we, we had people working under the king who became believers. People who were in the position, position of authority, became believers, believed in Jesus Christ, gave their life to Jesus Christ. Uh, so That's that, right. So, and that is, right. Way, that is the way it should be. We are not supposed, as believers, we are not supposed to be go, go to them. They are supposed to come to us. And that is that we are supposed to be the light of the world. We are supposed to be the salt of the world. Therefore, they are, we are, the, the, the expectation is that they we they we are all, all to be the influence or to them it's what we're supposed to be the influence to them not the other way around the sort of because um now you made mention of someone you know of someone how many what is the ratio if we, let's say ratio of one to ten how many came out that way how many you know you you know you know the reason why it's like that you know i you remember i said something that if we go with our lesser capacity the capacity, like I said, exactly what you have said. Leadership is a structure and a system of this world. It has nothing to do with spiritual system. And my question to you is this. We cannot make changes from afar. Let me tell you one thing, man of God. I know you will come to that. Okay. Let, let, let yeah. me answer that question. Okay. Let me be frank with you. Good leadership has nothing to do with Christianity. Beautiful. It, it, I agree. It, it, honestly, it, 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 good leadership is from the heart. Let me tell you one thing. Um, when you say righteous, righteous does not mean the person is, is um, when you say someone is righteous, doesn't mean the person must be a Christian to be righteous. Righteousness has nothing to do with, um, I say you rather call holiness, that is what really has something to do with spirituality. That's what ha has something to do with, uh, with our Lord Jesus Christ. But when you say someone is righteous, righteous is someone that is just upright, morally upright. The person is not morally upright. Which is different from righteousness. This moral is, uprightness. Moral, yeah, but, moral but if, but, uprightness is different from righteousness. No, hold on. That, no, that's not true. You know? of God. If you go, if you no. go, to, if you go to a dictionary, if you go to okay. the dictionary, the meaning of righteous, righteousness is, is uprightness. Someone you that are is talking, morally upright. As you, I, I want you to, as no, you are talking, you are talking in view, you are talking in view of the grace dispensation. You know, you've been, you know, emphasizing on the grace yes. dispensation. Yes. Okay. Yes. No. So when you are talking about that, I want you to talk about it in view of the grace dispensation. Yeah. Okay. In view of the grace, but that's what I'm saying. Again, back to the, my point okay. that okay. leadership has nothing to do with spirituality. It has agreed to completely. To so, um, as, as such, we have we've had believers go to Asian countries. They don't even believe they worship idols. Eh? India, um, China, um, 
Japan. Uh, the, the last time, uh, some years ago, when I traveled to Japan, I think I went to Jap Japan, Taiwan, and uh, yeah, China too. But to Japan, I know I realized well, there's something in Japan, in Tokyo to be precise. Um, we don't. I noticed something in Tokyo that almost in in every just almost every block, every block. Yeah, what, what we call block is every street, <laughs> like um, every street. Um, block means uh, not really every street, but on the street there are, I don't know how to explain it. Like in the US, we call it block. Yes, I think uh, from one street, the block is from one street to the next street. One street, okay. there are buildings all in between. And the next street, okay. from one street to the next street is a block. Now, okay. in Japan, in Tokyo to be precise, almost every, almost every block. It is not all every block, but almost, I said almost. Every okay. block is a shrine. It's a shrine. Mm. I'll tell you how that country is. Everything about the in fact, when I travel, we spent some weeks there. I went uh, um um and uh, we we couldn't fellowship, know where to fellowship. We 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 asked the then we had the we went to, as a delegation actually, Nigerian delegation uh, from Nigeria from uh, from as a member of Cardinal Chamber of Commerce, we traveled together. As a delegation, as a trade union delegation, whatever. So we had the, the Nigerian ambassador of them in, in Tokyo, whatever. We asked him, I said, Don't you have church here? Can't we want to fellowship or whatever? We asked there are the Christians among them, among, amongst us, we have about 17 of us, a sort of. So we asked, Don't you have a church here where we get? And the man just told us, Well, church is where you can find church now, it's rare to find here. And if you have to attend the church, it's a distance away, a sort of. So that's to tell you the kind of country you uh, that, that is a sort of. However, as backward, as spiritually backward as this country is, my God, you need to see their leadership is top notch. Everything is just working. No corruption. Almost, almost, almost zero corruption. This is a country where the more you, if you have found one thing. In corruption, it is a death penalty. This is a country where the the son, the son of a man who was a construct a, a contractor, a construction mogul, who died of corruption, who, who committed a corrupt an act of corruption, and died in the process. He, he wasn't prosecuted. They didn't find out. But when he died, when they found out, <clears throat> excuse me. They prosecuted his son for the crime of his father. So that is that is how that is. This is what we call that. That is what I can I consider to be okay. This is righteousness, righteousness not in the spiritual aspect. Righteous, <clears throat> excuse me, righteousness in the English definition in the English word. A sort of what righteousness is. These guys are morally upright. So that is exactly what we need in leadership. You don't need a believer. You don't need a born again Christian spirit field. How many of them have succeeded all over the world? And go check the ones that are succeeding. Okay, so the ones that are succeeding are even those people that don't don't even believe that God exists. Okay, sort of. Okay, my sorry, sir. My question for you is this: those criteria that you have highlighted. Yes. If a believer is found to have it, can't the believer go into active politics? Now. You see, my problem is it just I, I used to have a uh, a leader in the church those days um, who became a presiding elder in the church. He would always say, "Look, <laughs> this race, this heaven, heaven. Honestly, um, I don't mind being selfish when it comes to heaven. I rather let me even struggle, make me a force, at least struggle for myself to enter first before I could begin pull the other ones or whatever to join." Because Christianity is personal. You have to, first of all, strive to protect your own soul. You have to protect, fight, try to preserve, to preserve, protect your own soul. Work hard to prosper your own soul first before you begin to think of others. Now, my problem, like I said earlier, 
It's not about one's intention to join politics. It's about your spiritual standing. What happens? The Bible says flee temptation. Whatever you know will lead you. If your eye will lead you to sin, pluck it off. If your hand will lead you to sin, cut it off. Whatever will lead you to sin, cut that stuff off. off. You cannot go into the swine. In the, sorry, into the swamp, rather. You cannot go into the swamp and expect not to get muddled up with that same swamp, with the death of all the swamp there. Enter into swamp, enter in, into a, a swampy environment. If you dip your feet or even dip yourself into a swampy, um, a, a swampy uh, location, what happens? How do you what comes out with you? Of course, you come out. You know how swamp is. It's a it's, it's a it's a it's a it's a stagnant water. Um, an area where a stagnant water just is the no water doesn't flow out of flow. It's just there in that swamp. You see a whole lot of creatures in it. A whole lot of more than creatures, dirty creatures, dangerous creatures, or whatever. You dip your feet in in, in such a a, 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 a a location. What happens to you? You pull out. Your, you you see that you get. You get um, um, beaten by dangerous uh, creature, or you 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 pull out your feet. It's all death and mud all over it. That is what happens. You don't go if you go into the swampy environment. You get swamped up. So as believers, let me tell you something. If you if you the, the same apostle Paul, the Bible says we should we should work out our salvation with fear and trembling. With fear and trembling. Do you know what it means? Hey, okay, they call, they invite me, come and contest for elective position. Okay, it's important. Okay, we are sure you're going to be popular, you're going to win or whatever. And what happens as a believer? Um, what should come to mind as a believer? As juicy as that place is, as bright, as wonderful as the vision I have for the country or for that particular environment, that community is. First thing that should come to mind is your spiritual status, your spiritual uh, well-being. That is what, what should come to mind. It is that fear. The Bible, the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. With fear for you not to fall. You, As we walk daily, always, we'll always be afraid. We'll always be afraid not to... The fear, there are some fear that are evil fear. There are fears that are righteous fear, holy fear, innocent fears necessary fears and those necessary fears come as a result of resisting fleeing resist the devil and fleeing temptation those are the, that that those are what that means a sort of so the issue of working out our salvation with fear and trembling means that we should stay away from anything that just like someone now we remember those days i used to remember those days when we were evangelizing or whatever one pastor go enter, say they go preach, they enter where I shower people there, halos, prostitutes or whatever. And they take a make suya or whatever. Eventually he fell and uh, what happens? And so, so the thing is, you don't, you don't, you don't go into a place as a believer. It's just like what churches do that nowadays, um, allow them, just let them be um, when they come. They will get changed. I remember those days they will tell you, let them come, dress whatever they, the way, whichever way they dress. Um, let them do whatever they do. When they hear the word of God, they will change. What is happening today in the Christendom? Have they changed? Are they changing? Is the Christian, is the, is the, is the, is the church not turning into the world now as, as we speak? The church, the the the, 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 the 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 world is the one now influencing the church instead of the other way around. Why? Because we gave room for all these things. Okay, let us just walk together. Why? While they are here with us, they listen to the word of God. They hear whether the Holy Spirit will convict them. The Holy Spirit will arrest them. The Holy Spirit is arresting the few that they, they, that they, that that allow that that are open or we are open to the Holy Spirit to arrest. But majority, what happens? What happened? The majority, the devil is, 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 has influenced the church, is winning the majority. And that is why the church is at the position that we are today. A sort of. So that is the point. Again, back to the issue of working out our salvation with fear and trembling. It means that where you go, where you see people going, like we just mentioned, you mentioned on one person, somebody or people who went there and came out clean. 
and I asked you, what is the ratio? Now, you, you as a believer, working out your salvation with fear and trembling means, okay, this thing, you, know, I have, you go through record, you sit down, meditate over this thought, this, this, this issue, and you find out, you take record, take stock of people who, uh, of leadership, Christians in leadership roles, political leadership roles, and sort of. And at the end of the day, you find out that very few people came out, came out on hymns. Uh, very few people came Can out I? clean. Hold on, sir. Very few people, people okay. came out clean. What happens or whatever, that is when you have, that is where you are supposed to caution yourself. They, um, just like Apostle Paul, we always warn us. Um, be careful. Uh, I forgot, I'm trying to remember this word. That uh, I'm, to paraphrase, um, where Apostle Paul says, um, "Don't be, don't be, don't think too highly of yourself, lest you fall." A sort of. So uh, don't be too confident as a believer. No, um, he says, um, "Let him that thinketh he stand." Take let him fall. Get let, let him fall. correct. So that is yeah. the point. A sort of. So yeah. let us not be over. Don't let, let us not be overwhelmed with pride and arrogance and confidence that. No, I am too big to fall. I'm going there and I'm going to achieve it or whatever. I'm going to do this and that. No, that is not it. So go ahead, sir. Okay. Um, uh, you see, I, I can align with your line of thoughts. Align with your line of thoughts in the sense that, you know, um, it's a very sensitive thing. Sensitive in the sense that, number one, priority. You should think about your spiritual states there is no doubt about that you should think about your spiritual state you know um uh, but do you see my my challenge is this my challenge is this people are sent by the same heaven and commission and empowered like me you know um uh, you you said that one day we're going to do you know something that has to do with my testimony but let me say something you know part of it you see that my rascality led me deep into the war indian hand drinking you know when you were saying that you have never tested this in your life you have never tested it i say ah you kept your innocence right from that time. You understand? But do you know, do you know what? By virtue of where I am coming from, I am a strong messenger to that world. You can see me, I can go into where drug guys are, where Indian substance abuse guys are, and I can relate with them not condemning them, not making them feel anyhow. And I will still present Christ to them. So in other words, what I'm trying to put across is this. To that very world, there are messengers to that world. Yeah, just like Apostle Paul. That, yes, yes. That can go in there and their light will swallow up darkness. And they will come out without staining their garment. Like you have said, the ratio is very small. It is just the way we have exalted material things. If I am sent, which I know that me, I cannot be sent into politics. I know that is not my area. And that is why I'm saying that any man that has a call. You know, when you are looking at Acts chapter 6, they said that let us look for men of honest report, men of this, men of that. You understand? To stay at the level of leadership. This was spiritual. And I agree with you completely. I remember I once ministered in a church in Rwanda, and um, uh, the president is a friend of that very pastor. One of the big churches in Rwanda, you know, they don't even speak, the man, the, man, the church is so big, they speak um, uh, their language. The president does not identify with Christian. 
the current president that is doing the wonders in Rwanda, neither does he identify with Muslims. On a good day, he will go to the mosque. On a good day, he will go to church. So you know, uh, uh, you know that one is a very neutral man, but he's doing wonders in Rwanda. So I agree with you completely and totally that it is not about the spirituality. If a Muslim can take us to the promised land, yes. he has my backing. Yeah. He has my backing. Yeah, absolutely. You understand? Yes. So yes. it is not, um, uh, my campaign is not for, it must be a Christian, it must be this. No. As long as the man believes that he has the conviction and he has the capacity to go into the earthly leadership. After I've said it, that Jesus Christ speaking about the earthly leadership, he said the lords of this world, they lord it upon their subjects. That is the earthly leadership. And so if you know that you are called, you know, you have a vision and you have a conviction and you have what it takes, so go there and make changes. You understand? Mm -hmm. I encourage the person to go. But you see, like you have rightly said, you, do you remember Christopher Musa? Can you remember a name like that? Yeah, that name sounds rings a bell in secondary school, right? When we were in school. Yes, he was our senior. He was a year. Okay, ahead yeah, of ahead us. of us. Yeah, I think I remember. Okay, that. You, you know Dewa Football Club in yes. Jos. Yes, he's the owner of Dewa Football Club. Are you serious? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. He is the one that went into, you know, to contest for NFF that fought with picnic that FIFA had to ban him because FIFA stood by um, uh, picnic and he was their candidate. We're praying and believing God, you understand, for him to get there. But you know something happened, you know, you know, when the revival cut across in Medjugorje, we are all born again. He was like our leader. But do you know something? When I got to discover, you understand, I this this very broadcast here, I don't know where you can get to. So I, I bear my mind, you know, hiding nothing, you know. When I got to discover something, he even contested for the governorship of Plateau State. But when I got to, you know, discover something, I just have to pull away from it just have to disconnect because he is no longer, you know. So those cases are there. Those that we have heard and those that we know, you know, they go in there and they become corrupted, you know. So the name of Jesus Christ does not sound, um, you know, as authority in their mouth again. So I got disconnected. So the tendency is very high. The tendency is very high. Like you have said that it is a leadership that is given to Satan. And by that very authority, he even carried Jesus Christ to show him the entire beauty of the world. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that is what they are worshiping. All of them are falling because he will present it to them. But you see, if we have a man like Jesus, because he said, what I've done, you can do. His spirit flows in us. If we have a man like Jesus, that goes into that very place. He will not bow. We will not bow to that very, you know, stuff that the devil will offer unto him. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much, man of God. Yes, yeah, I think I understand you are trying to balance the whole thing. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, to an extent, I agree with you um, that um, there are circumstances that um, that a believer should find it, will, will find himself will find him, himself himself or herself that um, mm. and it will uh, spur him or her go into politics, um, which again brings me. I think I, I agree with you in that area. That this brings me brings me to um, individuality, spiritual individuality. Um, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that, that's uh, right. We shouldn't be a blanket stuff for everything because um, God deals with us individually. Um, That's right. So we, the way God, the, the, the way the God deals with you is different from the way he did. God does not deal with us. Um, he loves us, yeah. equally, but he does not deal with us the same way, the same modus of That's right. Or whatever. That's, That's why right. you see a um, uh, person in the will do something and goes God-free. Um, Paul will Another person. 
I will do something and God will get punished. God will. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah, so, right. Very so, true. So that is just it. So, and as such, what I expect, just like you try to balance it, so is um, let us as believers walk with God. Um, let us wait on God. Let us, um, I think, um, based on what I understand from you, um, um, that let us um, uh, let 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 us not be personal about it. Let us not be selfish about it. Let us have an open heart to seek God um, before we go into politics or into election. Very, very important. Not not being invited. Not that we see yeah. that you can uh, come and do this one. No. You understand? Yeah. The people that are inviting you, they have a curious motive. motive. When, when you get there, you know you have to satisfy. We put you there. Yeah, so that is just, just like I always say, my, I've always had this um, personal conviction that um, when God calls you to do something, mm -hmm. um, there is a broad chance, broad, not 100% possibility, not 100%, mm -hmm. but there is a very large possibility that you will succeed in that thing. And the success sure. of that thing, even though when God calls you, that you succeed still, there is a portion that depends on you as as a as as, as a, a person. A, a of, large portion. A, a large portion. Yes, a sort of because um, you may get distracted, even though God called you to right. do that. So, God directed that's you. Right. Directed that's you right. That. You may get distracted and um, derail. That's right. Sort of and probably fail. A sort of so. Um, I think um, I agree with you when it comes. Okay, if you have a personal conviction or personal revelation to go for something. Um, you can you can actually go for it, but on general terms, honestly, I usually advise believers. I that's my that I've, I've stood on this ground on this premise of for probably a substantial part of my Christian life. That look, politics is not meant for real, real born again Christian spirit filled, not right, not uh, um, religious uh, Christian Christianity. When you say Christian, Christian, Christian is a faith. It's not a religion. Uh, it's not it's a way of life. So uh, that that is, if you are born again, filled of the Holy Ghost, honestly, politics in general terms, politics and elective position is not meant for you. It is a place where um, you stand the risk of really, really getting losing it. your salvation. Losing your salvation. So that is just it. But on some peculiar cases, yes, I can understand peculiar cases where God can actually mandate someone, um, just uh, just uh, just like He did in the life of uh, uh, God. Even does that for even unbelievers. He did this in the life of Cyrus. Cyrus was, was an unbeliever now, but God chose him at that particular time to use him um, to, for, for good leadership. And God actually to establish His purpose. Yes, exactly. So that is just it. So. Um, not necessarily as a believer, but God uses anyone when it comes to leadership of this world. God mm. uses anybody to establish his purpose, and that's just it. Mm. Um, so if a believer tells me, okay, that's understandable, but if you tell me that God has revealed, God instructed you or revealed this to you, you better succeed in that thing. You better, you better get sure. to that point. Because so if you don't, don't get to that point, a liar. yes, that's just mm. it. Because if you, I always tell people sometimes, mm. they look, God can never lie. God can never contradict That's right. himself. If you give me prophecy That's right. that does say the Lord, this and this and that and that, oh, and that. Oh. And you better, you better, you better, you better pray that for the bread. Better pray that that thing to come to pass. Pray that prophet come to pass. Otherwise, I will just consider you a liar. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't Very come true. to pass, Very I will just tell you say. You, you don't have Very any excuse true. for you to give no excuse for it. If it doesn't come to I always tell I always, I always talk to my wife, I always tell my wife. I always I say my wife, look, no matter if you like, make you be the greatest man of God on this earth. If you make any, if you prophesy anything, and it does not come to pass. Even the book of Deuteronomy says said so to us. When God was telling, talking, speaking to Moses, say if anyone mm -hmm. prophesies a thing and comment not to himself, do not be afraid of that prophet. Yeah. Yeah, do not be afraid. Of course, disregard that prophet. Don't even be afraid of him. That means he's not from me. That I, I'm and not even, myself now. 
And even Paul said something that this one that I'm telling you, I am telling you as a man. As a man. Maybe God. Yes. You understand? Yes. Not the commandment. He was yes. able to define, exactly. He was it's able to define. Book, yes, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, so, um, so that is just it, uh, man of God. Anyway, um, thank you so much, uh, man of God, for everything. I think we have little more time. Okay. Um, now let me, let's use this short time to talk about what about monarchy? <laughs> Royal, like recently, uh, we have a very senior redeemed pastor in the US relinquished his position as a leader of the church in US, for God's sake, eh? of a local assembly. And uh, I, I think it's you know what what's is it on those state or a kitty state or so. I don't know one of the states. I consider, yeah. I, you know, that monarchy system in Nigeria is highly demonic. That yeah. man has lost it completely. Honestly. That man Honestly. has lost it. We talked about it every year and year. You can imagine, because the kind of initiation that goes yes. on in those things. Did you hear what happened? That he was, when he arrived, he was isolated for seven good days. What do you expect? What goes on days? in that There's isolation? Seven days. There is something they call in Yoruba Je, um, uh, Jehoba or something. You must eat the heart of the previous king hmm. for you to be qualified. Yes. No, Jehoba or something like that. They will tell you for you to be qualified, you know, they will tell you that now that you have eaten the heart of the previous king. It's they will preserve the heart. They preserve it for the next king. So the moment you eat it, it means that you have become a king. You have eaten the heart of a king. So you are now a king. The kind of initiation, the kind of demonic activity that goes on within that seven days, the moment the person comes out, he's no longer a normal human being. It has become something else. It has become a spirit. You understand? Even the foreign monarch, I, I those system, uh, I consider those system. I, do, I was just wondering. My younger sister is in England here. Yeah. And so when the queen died, I was saying, hey, I was saying that I pray or I wish that the monarch system will decline from now. Because the monarch system just hold everybody to bondage. And everybody is laboring, paying tax to them. I ask, how did they come to the establishment of this monarch system? That from generation to generation, the thing is still standing. And people just worship them like God. I don't know whether it's the same thing in abroad, but in Nigeria, the moment you enter it, that is the same thing with the politics of Nigeria. You must be initiated. That is it. It's there everywhere, my brother, uh, my man of God. Honestly, it's there everywhere. Initially, I, I didn't know that. I, did, I didn't think so until oh. um, I, I came to understand that it is when it comes to leadership of this world. Look, power. Oh. No leadership of this world. Eh? The, the entire leadership of the world, oh. the leadership has to do with spiritual warfare. Oh. It has to do with spiritual entanglements. Is deeply spiritual. There is no one that is not entangled uh, with one spiritual force or the other. That is just the truth. The only thing is that some of them, why you see some of them fighting each other, they may be in the same whatever, but some of them are really out. Uh, they fight each other because some of them come out to really do the right thing. They want to do the right thing, but there are some of, but, them, yeah. some of their co co colleagues in the court who are just there for personal aggrandizement. They want to amass and wealth are, and is, or whatever. Uh, so you see them fighting. They, they may you. be in the same mm. court, though, but you see them fighting yes. physically. But because because uh, one, one person decided to say, okay, I want to do the right thing. And uh, that's what that's that's the issue. That's where the issue of doing the right thing is not about spirituality. It's not about spirituality. It is not about sorry, it's a, it's not about actually being a believer, a Christian, born again, spirit filled. Doing the right thing, even come unbelievers. They get convicted to make up their mind to do the right thing. A sort of 
And that's why you see the Asian countries, their leaderships, are, their, the leaderships in, in Asian countries that does not even believe in God, that just believe in all they do is to worship idols or whatever. They, they are so morally upright that they always want to do the right thing. And so that is just it. Doing the right mm -hmm. thing has nothing to do with. That's why religion does not take us to heaven. What takes us to heaven is grace. Our Lord Jesus Christ. That says is the way, the truth, and the life. It is not, you can be righteous, you can be do. I told you something before earlier, but I said, look, I never clubbed, never drank, never smoked, never whatever. This thing does not take me to heaven. That's right. That's it true. It, it, That's it, this, 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 all these virtues that, that they don't define me mm -hmm. as a Christian. It, they don't. The they, don't God is me, the they, don't, they don't make me better than you. They don't make me better than the person that smokes or drinks or whatever. No. What mm -hmm. makes me Better is Christ. That is the difference. Christ. Christ. That is the Christ. distinction there. Yeah, that is the that's Christ. what makes me different. Christ. Right? Christ. So, um, is so that is just, and that is the that, that is why the rich the rich uh the rich fool um didn't succeed yeah. in what he did or whatever. Uh, even as a rich man, uh, you see, he did uh, everything. Uh, 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 everything because, he practiced uh, everything, he adhered to all moral laws and principles. Everything and Jesus told him, Okay, you've done all this, you are not far from the kingdom. Only one thing was left for him to do just to accept Jesus Christ. Yeah? He couldn't, he couldn't, he failed. Only one thing, he did everything, he he did all righteousness, he, but that he, Jesus he was that offended. One thing, yes, he failed, he felt offended. And so, that is so that that, that is actually that is that that is the point there. We when you come, that is the same thing with leadership, a sort of honestly. It has not succeeding. Whether whether you succeed or fail to succeed, it all it all depends on you, on the leader. That's right. Everything if you choose, rises if you and falls on the leader. Yes, yeah. you choose to succeed, you will succeed. It's all about That's making right. up your mind to do the right thing. Mind to do the right thing. That is it. All right, um, viewers, thank you so very much for being with us uh, again. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we have been having this wonderful, inspiring, and uh, motivation, uh, motivating conversation and discussion with our erudite man of God, Apostle Indifreke Imo. Um, honestly, I don't even know why you are not an evangelist, man of God, <laughs> because you just travel all over the place. You travel all yeah, from but... one state to the other, from one country. You just travel all over the place, evangelizing. As far as I'm concerned, you are supposed to be an that evangelist. Is... Eh? Just the travel, uh, but, but 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 the truth is that that is my true call. Yeah, that is what you ought to, ought to be because what you uh, are, your what your your the way you understand the scriptures, your inspirations just speaks to that effect because mm, uh, that is my true evangelists call. are the ones that really hold on to the core the core values of the scriptures. A sort of, mm. uh, they don't they don't evolve they just remain it is just this and they remain focused on that or whatever so and you seem to have all the all the traits of an evangelist moving yeah. around traveling everywhere yeah. from one point to from one crusade to the other from one program to the other be invited to different mm. churches or different denominations to minister the word of god um so anyway um it's um, you are an apostle of God, so we appreciate God for that. We give him all the glory. Um, we shall be talking about how you actually, because your life is going, is an interesting story. Um, mm, it is, we, sir. It we, is. We're actually talking about that, uh, sort of. You didn't even, you didn't, you, you probably will ask me how I found out, because, uh, you know, you and I, we, uh, anyway, we'll talk about that, though. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. That is just it. Viewers, thank you so much. Sorry, I deviated. I wanted to go into personal stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go into that right now. Viewers, thank you very much for joining us and uh, uh, stay tuned with us and uh, keep in touch. Uh, we will continue to get receive these uh, inspirational messages um, um, from time to time as, it, as the spirit as the spirit leads. Man of God, we are honored once again. For raising our screen, taking our time, all everywhere. What well, for the past um, four, about three or four of our episode episodes now has been on transit, not on your not that's right, speed. that's right, Being from one that's state right. to the other. So that's right. Very true. You are you are you are you are, you are uh, featuring from uh, Uyo, right? Yes, 
Yes, yes, whatever. yes. I'm featuring last week program, yes. last week segment featured from Abuja or whatever. So you're just all over the place. Um, may God continue to guide you. Uh, directly Amen. 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 So Amen. thank you very much. Please, can you uh um, no, welcome in closing prayer, sir? Or random, yeah. like, you have any exaltation? Yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. Sir. Yeah. I am. Uh, I want to thank God once again for this very platform, and I know that God will take the inspirational word that he has put in our spirit to communicate, to bring about healing Amen. in different aspects of life Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today we have talked about politics, and uh, we have talked about places that don't even believe in God, things are going well, and the place that religion has captured, we are suffering, especially in Nigeria today. Mm. We ask that God will heal our nation. The Bible says, my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and ask God for forgiveness. Mm. He said he will forgive us and he will heal our land. Lord, we use this opportunity we ask, so oh Lord, that God to have mercy upon our land, Nigeria, Amen. our nation, Nigeria, Amen. and let your healing power permeate the land, permeate the, stra Amen. the strata of government. Lord, every strata of government, from the federal to the state, to the local government, to all the council, let the healing power come upon our nation. African nation will pray that the healing power of God will come upon our nations in Africa. The Bible says that we should pray for men in authority. We are not talking about being Christian or being no Christian. We are talking about men that have vision, men that are purposeful. Is it not the man that built Dubai? Mm -hmm. He is not, he does not believe in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Lord, touch their hearts of men in authority. Let them begin to think about their subject. Let them begin to think about the welfare of their subject in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the cry and the pain of the people be alleviated because of good governance in the name of Jesus Christ. This week, I pray, as we go out this week, may we encounter unusual favor. As we go out this way. May God show up for us Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. I pray this way as we go, let long-standing issue be resolved. Amen. Let that very answer, that answer that men and women have been looking for under the sound of my voice, may they encounter that answer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jehovah, we pray that as we have seen the last day Last Sunday in the month of November, we shall see the last day. Amen. All of us as a family, and we shall enter gloriously into the month Amen. of December. Amen. Father, we give you praise and glory. Hallelujah. We honor you Hallelujah. because you are God. Yes. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. Thank, Thank you, you very so much, much for Thank having you, man of God. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Pa. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you very it much. It is well. Thank you very, very much, God sir. Bless. Thank you. God, God bless. bless. Thank you. Amen. Yeah.